Hello everyone. Us, I'm Ryan Hayashi. Welcome back to Hayashi Dojo in Mannheim, Germany. This is another video lesson for my students. The subject being Seiza. How to sit in this Japanese position called Seiza. And then naturally also how to stand up. Okay. This is a traditional part of Japanese culture. Before a Western influence brought in uh, tables and chairs, the height used in the Western world, the Japanese used to sit like this every day. The tables used to be this high <laughs> because uh, they didn't have chairs, so they would have little low tables, and this was the regular sitting posture in everyday life. Bowing again. Was a normal part of their everyday life. Before the Western influence taught them how to shake hands with people, they would bow to people. Now, learning how to sit and how to bow is a cultural part of, of the learning experience when you learn karate or any form of budo. Um, it, it means a lot to the Japanese sensei zu, who travel around the world and try to teach this traditional part of their culture to people around the world. Even non-martial artists, the older generation Japanese, they're, they're very happy to see you when their own Japanese younger generation learn this and uh, are extra happy to see foreigners learn how to sit and bow in a normal, uh, in the correct way. Because there is a right way to do it and a wrong way. Now, an example that the Westerners will relate to. When I lived in Tokyo, Japan, training at the, the JKA World Headquarters and working as an English teacher to, to earn my money, I sometimes had to teach Japanese businessmen how to shake hands when they said hello. Uh, they would do it wrong. Uh, the Japanese businessmen I met in 1998, 1999 would sometimes just put their hand out. They would take their hand, but it would just be a, a, a limp fish. It would just hang, hang there, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't grip your hand. The reason for this, they learned handshakes by seeing it in movies and TV. Here, they could see the hand go up, but they couldn't see the pressure of gripping another man's hand. So they would just do a limp fish. They would also look at the floor, which felt wrong and looked wrong. Because politely, in their, in their culture, they would look down when they bow. They wouldn't look people in the eyes. So they would combine it. They would just have you sort of take a soggy hand and they would look down. I had to teach them to grip the hand, make eye contact, and say hello. Now, um, this is if they want to shake hands with someone from the Western world. Someone who wants to learn how to bow the Japanese way um, has, has to learn this the correct way. We are not talking about Klingons from Star Trek or the orcs or elves from Lord of the Rings. The Japanese people and the culture do, in fact, exist. It is a very real thing. And the people do this. So this is how they greet each other. Okay? The bow is not just going up and down. The actual bow is this pause you hold at the bottom. There. Before you go, go up. So the bow, hold, and then up. The higher the position or rank of the person you are bowing to, the lower the bow. So if it is an important <coughs> or older person, the bow would look like this. Okay? The position of the hands also plays a role. To make it more polite, you not only bow lower and longer, the hands move to the front. So if I were to bow to the camera and make it extra polite, my hands move from the sides to the front. And that would be a deeper bow of more respect. More casual, the hands simply stay at the sides and ride down the side of the leg. So it looks like this. Okay? 
I don't know where this European, and I've also seen it in North America, this Canadian, American, and European habit comes of, of the penguin slap, but I, uh, some Westerners just think it makes them look more like military penguins if they do something like this that sort of looks like uh, Jim Carrey in the eyes of the, the Japanese people. Now, that is a standing bow. A sitting bow is from the seiza position. So, uh, sei means correct. It's the same word as in seiken. A seiken is a correctly formed fist. Za means to sit. Seiza means correct sitting. It's the same sei from our dojo's name, seitoha. Seitoha means a correct uh, way or a traditional school. Yeah. So, the seiza has the head staying up. <laughs> I try to teach my students this because Westerners who try to sit down in a seiza position will sort of fall down like cripples, <laughs> suffer in pain as you know the waves on their knees and then get up like this. Which is it's even painful for me to watch. So the correct way is to move straight down like an elevator, head stays upright. Okay? So from the front it looks like this. Tate or standing up looks like this. I'll show it from the side. The left knee goes first. Then the right, then I lay my feet flat, and sit my hips down on the feet. Standing on is the reverse. First the balls of the feet come up, then the right knee comes to the side, the right knee comes first, and then I stand straight up with my head staying upright, like this, okay? That is the more formal way to sit and stand from seiza. Uh, the other common way is to have the legs stay together. Okay, from the front it looks like this. It's still always the left knee, but the left knee comes to the heel. The legs move together. Knees take the position to sit. And then standing up is always the right foot first. Against the knee. Okay, from the side it looks like this. And then right foot first. Okay, now historically the reason for these two variations um, in the olden days, before 1900, the Japanese did not wear pants. I mentioned this in another video. They wore this, a top, that wrapped across the front like a bathroom but went longer, and underneath just a scarf tied around the private parts called a funyoshi. In order not to flash everyone by having <laughs> the body open up, it was more polite to keep your private parts covered by this kimono, in the shape of a bathrobe, by having the knees stay together. Okay? Now, the samurai, or the noble classes, on top of the kimono, they wore a hakama, which would cover the opening of these flaps in the front. This allowed them to sit more elegantly because they could simply lower the hips and have the knees open up. But still, they place the left knee first. There's a reason for it, which I'll, I'll now explain. And then standing up, same thing. Now, if we are joining other clubs or other members in, in a seminar, we have to look at how the higher ranking colleagues sit and try to follow them the same way. I teach my students both ways of sitting. Now, historically, the samurai 
would wear two swords strapped to the left hip, a long one and a short one, or at least a dagger. I'll try, I'll try to wrap this up, I don't know if I'm <clears throat> They would take the long sword, lay it away, but coming down first down on the left knee would allow them with the short sword or dagger to still react if they had to. Okay? Standing up, same thing, would allow them to, to be movable in an emergency. They could still pull their knife, their tongue pole. The left hand allowed them still to have their weapon hand free. If they didn't like the look of the person they were bowing to, they could suddenly take a defensive measure with the weapon in their hand. Now to be more polite, instead of the left-right, which is the standard way of bowing, with higher ranking senseis or important people, we put both hands simultaneously in front. This symbolizes that uh, we're putting our lives in their hands. Okay, just a little bit of background on the history of Seizat, what it looks like. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.